All right, what's up? So today I wanted to go over something that um, I've kind of noticed that some people have an issue with when it comes to learning the game and like trying to become a better player. And it's that they really have a hard time learning like how to do VOD review. Um, so I wanted to cover that today. A lot of times people will be like, hey, you know, I was doing VOD review and I watched like my matches, but I don't really know what I should be looking for. I don't really know how to learn through what I just watched. Like I just watched myself play and like I understand the logic behind what why I made the decisions and like why they didn't work out. But how do I improve from that? So um, I'm gonna keep it really simple. There's three things that I generally look for when I'm doing a VOD review. Um, this is a VOD review for someone in my Metify. Uh, they have the ability to like send replays and we don't actually have to be together. So I'm doing a VOD review um, for them. Uh, so three things I usually look for are patterns, positioning, and progress. And it's really easy. You can remember it, the three Ps essentially. Um, and I'll explain them really quickly. So patterns is like... Uh, Obviously, if you see something happening over and over again, it's a pattern, but you can find patterns in a lot of different situations. Do they have like a pattern of doing neutral get up, then jump from the ledge, then neutral get up, then jump? Do they just do neutral get up, neutral get up, roll? Do they do et cetera, right? Do they do dash back, dash forward, dash back, dash forward, forward? Do they do dash back, jump forward? Like those types of patterns, right? Like you just notice patterns when they get hit out of disadvantage. Do they do air dodge? The first time do they do jump the next time tracking their drift if they you go if they're drifting like this and you're under them do they go that way like it's a, just patterns right um and then positioning is a concept that's kind of hard to explain because most people get positioning confused with spacing but essentially it's like you position yourself in the best way in either advantage or disadvantage or neutral in any situation to have like the best outcome for you, right? So um, if you're an advantage, you wanna limit as many options as possible through your positioning uh, and being very threatening. And in disadvantage, you wanna get out of like their threat zones as well as possible. If they're positioning well against you, then you know you, it's like a back and forth tug of war and neutral is well, neutral. And then progress is just throughout the, match like how are the things that you are learning affecting like the match later or how are the things that the opponent's learning are affecting the match later so i've never seen this vod before um and i was like really nervous doing this because who knows what i'll get out of this but we're actually just gonna do this live one take no no edit no nothing i mean i may edit it a little bit but you know live one take and what in the world was that and um yeah, we'll, we're, we're going to go through, like, me VOD reviewing together. Now, it's for the Min Men. Of course, I probably play Min Men. Um, and they were gracious enough to let me, you know, use this replay and not really put them on blast, but, you know, put it out there that I'm doing a VOD review. So thank you. And, uh, yeah, so I'll just go through a few things that I noticed throughout the game um, and just kind of, like, give you, like, like a chance to pick my brain at how I, I study event, essentially. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> so already you can see that like the Palu jumped twice on the platform and they like went to the platform, right? And they just tried to do it again. So from here, you should know that they're gonna jump. And you saw that full hop come like right after I said they were gonna jump. It's because like, they're already inclined on wanting to jump. So you should like take note of that immediately. Like, wait a second, they're doing a lot of jumping. Here we did a high air dodge. It was a little risky, but we got away with it. And we're still swinging a little too much. Um, and in areas where you can't hit them without committing. So I feel like if like here, I would already go back, go back and I would just like take a few notes. Wait a second. Um, They've been doing a lot of jumping, like vertically, like high jumps to try to get me to swing my arms, which, you know, is a little committal. Maybe I should try to play a little more reserved if they're doing that. So that's like already a pattern that I noticed. Um, positioning wise, again, like they're up here. So you're trying to deal with like being in this area, right? And trying to use your nair to anti-air that area in front of you. 
Um, you could also play a little more aggressive, jump horizontally, and um, try to meet them up there, but it's way more risky, but it, you get a lot more reward off of it. So sometimes you just got to gauge your risk reward. But at this point, I would already be thinking about how much this person is jumping and um, try to formulate a plan around that. But we'll keep going, and this is where the progression comes in. Um, we'll, we'll see how how they deal with like learning that information. Boom, nice recovery. It's a little greedy, but. It looks like we tried to call out the jump, but like, this is where I would go back. And if I was talking to this person, I would try to explain it to him. So we're, it looks like we're aware of the jump, right? Like we go, we go high here to try to cover the jump, but this is where you can learn things about the game. Palutena's jumps are just naturally really high. So more often than not, unless you have Ram Ram in this situation, they're just going to be able to jump over this. Um, you would have to do like a retreating backward Ram Ram to hit them and catch them out of their jump. Just to let them know that like, you know, they're, you're, that you are aware of them wanting to jump in so much and like get them not to just be able to full jump in. So again, we, we are aware, we've recognized the pattern, but I've also recognized the pattern on your end where if you were to, tr to try and deal with anti-airs, then you're probably going to go for something a little more committal than um, trying to, like, make them want to choose a different option, if that makes sense. Like, your idea of making them want to choose a different option is, like, punishing them really hard so they have to go and do something else, right? They're like, wait a second, I just took, you know, 20%, 30% for just simply trying to jump. Maybe I'll, I'll approach from the ground, but... You can take that chip damage like if you ever play against like joker or something like that and they're just shooting the gun and you're like bro this is so annoying you can do the same thing with them and so um here i would just go like notice this distance where you are like this is where positioning comes in this distance they tend to do a lot of jumping and i would try to play around like maybe trying to do like up tilts when they're landing up smash when they're landing uh maybe even run forward and meet them up there with the nair which is a lot more risky so i probably wouldn't do that um i'd probably do the ram ram thing that i mentioned earlier so just something to take note of and again we've gone through a few patterns and we're starting to see how like the progression of the game go i'm not going to go through this entire thing because it's 12 minutes long and it's like probably different games uh it's a semi-final set um i'm just going to go through this one game and like see what i've learned through it so we get punished again good to go ledge it's the second time we've done down air, and there again we went for the megawatt, and it panned out. And you see how now they they dashed on the ground first before they started to approach, and again a nice punish with the megawatt. So it just feels so committal. But now we have we have a lot of control, and nice we got the stock. So already you can see like the pattern recognition on Drago's part is actually really good. They um, are very aware of the fact that the opponent likes to jump, but now we need to figure out what they're going to do afterward. Like, how many layers? This is where you find out, like, um, how how uh, deep your, your pockets go, essentially. Like, how many layers of gameplay do you have? Because before, you were trying to control the ground, right? And then they started jumping, and now you have the ability to jump, like, cover the jump. So now... They're playing a lot more reserved. They're throwing a lot more auto auto reticles, explosive flames, or light. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, side B, side special. <laughs> um, and do you have the ability to deal with that? Because if you don't, then it doesn't matter how like how many patterns you've recognized if you don't know what to do. But that's also part of VOD review is if you don't know what to do, that's where you can learn, you know? Like you can come up with like different ideas and you don't even have to know if they work. But the thing is, is that you attempt to come up with a new idea, right? So let's keep going. Nice grab. Our roll here, nice roll, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. You could see by the way that they were positioned, like so close to the ledge, that they were probably going to go for like a close ledge trap. So going for the roll was pretty safe. Nice. All right, this is looking like a good game so far. 
the arm throw wouldn't have caught anything, and I probably wouldn't have done it, but it's it's fine. Take a lot of damage, but it's fine. 50 is not that bad. You still have your double jump, so it's fine. Nice. Yep. Perfect. And we're staying a lot more mobile, and now you can see the, the opponent's back to the jumping strategy, right? It feels like they don't have that many layers of like um what they want to do it's either this or that you just need to like kind of it's, it's, it feels like a 50 50 but you have to be like really aware of if they're going to be doing the the jumps or if they're just going to be approaching from the ground now this isn't me by the way i'm just throwing this out there this is not me doing the replay review for them this is me like teaching how i would be doing a vod review like if i were watching myself these are things that i would just pick up on because Every time I get hit, I kind of like try to take a note of how it happened, right? Like, again, just through patterns, was I in a certain part of the stage? Was I doing a certain thing? What move did I get hit with, et cetera? So just know that this isn't like me, like talking directly to them. I'll go back and write notes and stuff later. Anyway, so nice. We have stage and here's where I feel like you either win or you, well, obviously you either win or you lose, but we've been getting away with doing a lot of down airs, I've noticed, especially from ledge, and uh, hopefully the opponent doesn't let that continue to happen. Um, if I were Drago, honestly, I would continue using Megawatt because that's what when we've been having the most success. I feel like uh, too often people change things up too early. Um, when it doesn't when it's not called for like we were winning pretty heavily when we were using a lot of megawatt right and there's them going for a trump again when they're or not not like a trump but like a close edge guard when they like dash toward the stage we're in a good spot just take your time like this is too scrappy if um this is another thing you can learn right if you're in a position where you're at high percent and they're at low percent and you finally made it to this you have some distance they can't actually kill you without grab like the only thing they can do is grab you and throw you back off stage you should be aware of that and be like okay well how do i die here like i die to back air i die to up air i die to nair to up tilt and i die to dash attack right um obviously like the smash attacks and stuff will kill you the forward tilted ledge will kill you jab at ledge will kill you but like you're not gonna get burst down by run up jab right you're gonna get burst down by a dash attack so i'm, I'm more talking about things that like you probably can't react to like if they get too close so here uh like this is where i'll be like okay well i have to make them work for the kill like as a player you want them to work for the kill so when you are at high percent and they're at low percent, make them work as hard as they can. Like rolling in isn't bad. Like I feel like a lot of people will like say that you shouldn't roll in here, but you haven't really rolled in this situation that often, right? So it would catch them off guard. Like holding shield would be fine, but more likely not you'll just get grabbed and you'll have to try it again. But you have not really rolled in. You've rolled from the ledge, but you haven't really, like, rolled in, right? And more likely than not, they're going to try to kill you with the back air. So if you could just roll in and, like, get staged, you're in a great spot, right? Any other way of trying to get out of the corner is probably way too hard. Like, between holding shield, doing, like, down tilt, dash attack, or rolling in, that I feel like those are, like, the really the only ways. Unless you see them commit to, like doing a full hop like back air or short hop back air to like rising to call you out then i wouldn't ever go for anything that uh anything else like any 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 other options just like extremely risky so here like you can already you can already see that second one was probably another messed up uh back air they probably meant to just do back air twice but it's fine you decided to go backward instead of forward um which is actually really good against Palu because they can't grab. So it's, we're in a good spot, right? But then we just did spot dodge. If you just did, if you just held shield, you wouldn't die. Like that one situation probably changes this game a lot because <clears throat> they get to net a kill off of like 
pretty much nothing, right? Like they, you didn't really do anything to deserve to get killed except for spot dodge. But if you held shield, like what are they going to do to hit your shield? Like who cares? This is so weird. I'm not even streaming and I just got that follower notification. <laughs> I'm like literally recording. I'm not streaming, but thank you. Swan. Anyway, um, so we died here and that's unfortunate. So again, I would actually be looking toward keeping out Megawatt because this is where we've been having the most success. And I would also try my best to avoid low percent nares because when they came back with invincibility last time, um, they tried to do nair at low percent. And in general, like Palutena just wants nair at low percent, right? If not, they want like forward air dash attack, back air dash attack, right? One of those two. But those aren't nearly as punishing as getting nared. So I probably wouldn't even like. I would just try my best not to get hit by those. And that's like something you that's where, like, again, the progress comes in, right? Like, I know that at low percent, they want to near me because that's what they've been doing at low percent. So I'm just going to try my best to avoid that. Instead, we're trying our best to hit them, which isn't really worth. But we got a spot dodge out. We're chilling. It worked out. That was really cool. And we got Nared. We... Still winnable. You've been getting away with jump from ledge. So actually, I would keep doing it, honestly. A lot of times, jump from ledge has been something you've been getting away with. And look for a jump read. If you threw the second one earlier, you won the game. There's jump again. Boom, boom. You're fine. Still good. I wouldn't have jumped there though. It's too you're like kinda like, like kinda panicky. And that's something I would take from this too, is in like high per high percent situations, especially when you have the lead. It seems like you're just trying to force the kill. Instead of taking your time. Oh nice. So like some big takeaways from that game is one, um, again, like Megawatt was working when you had it out, right? Like the one time you pulled out Ram Ram wasn't really that successful. And who knows? It could have been a bad Ram Ram day. It could have been whatever, right? Some days you're just playing well with one arm and not the other. Like, I know I, I play Mimit. Um, but like huge things that I would take away from that game is one, um, don't. Stop doing things if they don't stop working. Like when you were covering jumps with Megawatt, you were like having a lot of success. And then they switched up their playstyle one time and then they just you like completely abandoned the playstyle before. Like when they went back to the the jumpy playstyle, you're like, bro, what do I do? And it's like just because someone like adapts one time doesn't mean that they're gonna go back to adapting. Cause okay, let's say like that's this is why I mentioned layers. So let's say you have like seven layers of gameplay, right? When I say layers, it's like, I'll just use a really simple scenario. So um, you're both here. They like to jump. You get hit by the jump. Next time you anti air their jump. This time they move forward and we are on layer two, right? They move forward and you try to anti air their jump. Then you hit them, right? Or you get hit by them, right? Boom. So layer three, they move forward and you just grab them or you hit them before they hit you, right? If they go back to layer one, that is as deep as they go. Like they have nothing else. Like there's, there's, they may surprise you every now and then, but more likely than not, like if they start jumping again, then you go back to layer one. You don't just go, wait a second, they're on layer three. Like I'm on, I'm going to layer four. And it's like, for what like they haven't shown you anything deserving of you needed to do new things if you were winning when you were doing certain things then continue doing those certain things and you'll win but if they change it up and then they go back to the things that you were beating them for before then go back to doing the things that were beating them before um so that's probably like the biggest thing that i would take away from this game other things like habits and stuff though i feel like those aren't that important because th those are like things you can like really you can always work on right like you have some habits like who cares if you jump from ledge there's reasons that you're jumping from ledge right 
um and you were getting away with jumping from ledge so again there's not much reason to show to like show new things another thing that i would probably take away from just this particular game is when you are like ahead at high percent uh you get kind of panicky you do a lot of air dodges you do so a lot of rolls a lot of spot dodges when like it feels like you're not considering how the other character kills you like who cares if you get put in a situation oh no i have to shield that's that's fine they're gonna grab you who cares you're at 150 as long as you're not getting back thrown against palutena you're, you're probably not gonna die until like 190 if you get up thrown right so again i would just be chilling like I got put in a bad position, like I put myself in a bad position, the opponent's playing well, and they put me in a bad position. Hey, we shielding. We shield. Because how else are you gonna die? Like make them work for the kills. Um, I feel like a lot of times you just did options because you wanted to hit them instead of like playing around them needing to hit you because once you have the lead like once you have a stock lead they have to kill you because they're on a timer they literally have to so if you just play around the fact that they have to kill you then suddenly it becomes a lot different because you're not so focused on how to like close out the game right or like how to just just win you're focused on wait a second well, if I avoid these few moves, then I'm not going to die. If I get put off stage, who cares, right? Trusting your ability to recover, trusting your ability to get off the ledge, even though Min Min doesn't have the best ledge options, like trust in yourself as a player and like the, your ability to outplay them and then go from there, right? Like don't try to be like, oh no, like I might get put off stage though. That's bad. Well, being off stage is better than being dead. So um, I feel like a lot of times you try to outplay people when you don't need to try to outplay them. Sometimes you can just take take the best hit. Like taking the grab is way better than taking a back air and dying. So um Yeah, I think those were like be some some big takeaways. If you wanted to go into habits, I I again that's just not something that I like to do personally, just because there's reasons behind everything, like I said before. And if you had questions about certain habits and how to break out of them or where you should go that's different but um when i'm doing like a vod review i probably wouldn't focus on like oh i have like this habit because a pattern is different than a ha habit if that makes sense um a habit's like unconscious right like it's like unknowing where like a pattern's like something you're like actively or at least you should like actively be aware of um so yeah this is way longer than I thought it was going to be, and I only did one game. This is also why when I do replay reviews, they take absolutely forever because I like to go really in-depth about, like, really s things that seem really trivial, but they actually, like, end up meaning a lot. Um, Because, and this is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll end this. When you're, like, playing this game, right? Like, look at the, look at the percents, right? You're at 137, and they're at game, right? They have no more stock. But... All that means is that you won. So it didn't matter if you had three stocks or if you had one stock, right? You won the game. And a lot of times people get so stuck up on like, oh, but I didn't obliterate my opponent or like, oh, I didn't like, you know, this game was really close. Like, ah, and it's like, that's, that's fine. Like sometimes like you're playing against good people too, right? And I think it's like kind of rude to be like, oh, well, I, I didn't destroy this person. So as long as you come out with the w in the end then like trusting your your gameplay right to be like okay i'm consistently doing things well and this should lead to me winning if you're consistently doing things bad or poorly then of course it'll end up to you probably losing sometimes you can you know it's smash you can cheese a stock at like two percent but like you go through these percents at zero, whatever, you do your, your combos, you take your chip damage here and there, um, and hopefully you're not getting overwhelmed and you fall too far behind. Because, like, in this game, you could see that, uh, let's just, like, go, like, this person is already down a stock, and they could continue to fall down more, right? But if they take the stock now, then they're only down one Nair combo 
or two neutral interactions right and like when you start thinking of the game that way then it gets a lot easier because then you're not so focused on oh i need to hurry up and get the kill because i'm i am at um you know i'm down a whole stock it's like well are you really that you're down a whole stock but even if you poked and prodded and didn't take that much damage let's say you took 20 more percent right and you ended up killing them uh if if i were the palo i'm sorry and we took 20 more percent ended up killing the min min at 160 right that is significantly better than trying to kill the min min at 120 130 and taking 40 more percent because when they come back you only have to win like two neutral interactions maybe maybe one depending on how you win the neutral interaction right if you're down 80 you probably have to win three four neutral interactions and if you don't do it like in a row like then it's it's brutal because then they may tack on more damage and you just find yourself like slowly falling behind to where it's like just way too hard to catch up so um that's just something that i think a lot of people don't recognize is they feel like they have to hurry up and take the stock where you don't you don't have to like you have time as long as you do it before the timer is over like you're all good well you'll still have to catch up to the percent but you know you know what i mean essentially you have a lot of time to work with and i feel like a lot of people rush it but anyway that's gonna be it um i hope this helped um yeah i just hope this helped i don't maybe i could explain it in better words i'm i'm not really sure been 27 minutes i'm gonna go now